What's going on guys? This is Carter Carls, Texas A&M beat writer for Gigum 247. I'm here at Kyle Field. Texas A&M just beat New Mexico in its season opener, 52 to 10. I'm gonna try not to get hit by these uh, sprinklers, but uh, I'm gonna do something new for you guys today. Basically gonna walk to my car, talk about the game, give you my thoughts. Um, kind of took the idea from uh, our Arkansas guy at 247, Trey Biddy. Uh, he does a, a great job if you haven't uh, uh, checked him out, but uh, we'll, we'll get started. I mean, I, I think that when you talk about season openers and Texas A&M under head coach Jimbo Fisher, they usually don't go too well, at least in the last three seasons they haven't. I mean, even in their 2020 season when it was Kellen Mond at quarterback and they finished top five in the country, they struggled against Vanderbilt, nearly lost to Vanderbilt. Uh, this time, they left uh, They left no questions, really. I mean, uh, from a big picture standpoint, I just feel like A&M did as well as you could have wanted them to do. Uh, much different, again, right from the last few openers, but really just offensively is the first thing that kind of stands out, right? Garner Wigman threw for five touchdowns. First five possessions were touchdowns for Texas A&M. And, man... Bobby Petrino's offense, I'm telling you what, we had been hearing about it all off season. We obviously had the scuttlebutt with uh, <laughs> Jimbo Fisher, not not quite wanting to tell who, who calls the plays at first, but uh, very clear that Bobby Petrino's the one calling the plays. And he really has, um, and that's some noise. You're, you're gonna hear that as I walk to the car. There's still some people out here, but, uh, as I was saying, yeah, like what you notice in this offense compared to recent years, there was a lot of things, but really the, the biggest thing that caught out caught my eye was how they attacked sort of the, the sideline, right? Uh, you, you talk about deep shots, right? Well, sometimes you can have a guy that's wide open and you're you're throwing it with, with no one around him and, you know, that, a lot of guys can do that, but in this game, what, what really stood out to me about Connor Wigman was his ability to throw to the opposite hash, throw between the hash and the sideline, make those throws that not every quarterback can make. Now, I, I felt like he could have been better with his deep ball. Now, he had some under throws. He waited a little bit too long on some passes, right? But for the most part, 18 to 23, one ball, Evan Stewart kind of dropped deep. Another ball, he kind of underthrew to Jade Walker. But five incompletions and five touchdowns. <laughs> That's pretty good if you ask me. And another thing was, Connor just made the right decisions. I mean, he, he didn't, he was, he was fairly accurate. He made the right decisions. There was nothing that you could really point to his game other than the deep ball stuff that really that really concerns you. Um, and I think, you know, we saw it again, how he's able to use his legs, how he's able to get out of the pocket, throw on the run. He can make every throw on the field. And you, you kind of had some questions with him, right? Like, the a sophomore. He's only played five games previous to this. Yeah, he's got the talent, but how confident is he, is he gonna be? Well, looked pretty dang confident. He was attacking the field. He was exploiting mismatches. And, you know, it's important to remember, right? It's, it's New Mexico, not a very good team. I mean, I think they had one cornerback who had like, what, five pass interference penalties? Um, but what I like about Petrino's offense is we talk about feed the studs. We talk about how A&M is going to be kind of using that mantra this year, which is something he's popularized. What I saw from that is he wants to exploit the weakness in the defense. And he wants to do it with his best players, right? It sounds pretty simple, but, but that's really what it is. And you saw it. The, these DBs really struggled for New Mexico today. Evan Stewart, Noah Thomas getting a lot of separation downfield and they kept going to it. I mean, there was a point in time 
maybe in the second or third quarter where I'm like, did Connor, has Connor Wigman even thrown it over the middle yet? <laughs> like, I've, I've, I had not seen something quite like that in a while where it was like every single pass is between the hash and the boundary and is like 20 plus yards field, put 20 plus yards down the field. Um, so I really like that. Noah Thomas, three touchdowns, um, 76 yards, I, I think, six catches. We've been talking about this guy all off season. I think last year he only he only had 90 yards, two touchdowns. But I want to make sure I'm going the right direction. We're, I'll have some uh, awkward pauses in here because uh, first year on the beat, still trying to figure out where I'm going. But um, yeah, when when you talk about Noah Thomas, I feel like he always had it in him. We just hadn't seen him yet. We saw him in the spring game get hurt four plays in the spring game. And when we saw him a little bit last year, he flashed, but there just wasn't like a whole ton that we got to see out of this guy. Well, he comes in today, scores the first touchdown of the season, makes a couple other big catches, and he kind of shows you why we've been talking about him all off season. We showed you why A&M named him the offensive MVP of the spring. And I'll say another thing, the thing about Noah Thomas, first of all, there's not many guys like Noah Thomas out there. He's six foot six, right? And um, what he does just from a body control and, and catch radius standpoint, you could, I mean, you could just throw it up to him and he'll get it for you. So I think he's gonna be a real weapon for this team. The other thing I'll say about uh, Noah Thomas is he didn't want to quite say it in the post game. Jimbo didn't want to quite say it in the post game, but from all that we've heard, he is he's hurt a little bit, right? He, he's you saw him on a few a few plays today. You saw him kind of limping around. I think last play of the second half, he limped around uh, out of the game. He's not 100%. And I'm not sure he'll be 100% uh, for a good chunk of this season, at least. And yet, that's what he does? It's crazy. And, and I may have even buried the lead, too, with Evan Stewart. That guy, <laughs> I mean, the fact that he did not make preseason All-SEC... I never understood it. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if there's three SEC receivers, three receivers better than him uh, in the SEC. Uh, how many receivers are there in the country who are better than him? Now, again, he's, he's got to prove it. that It's one game, it's New Mexico. But in a terrible offense last season with a terrible quarterback, or at least just terrible quarterback play, he was like fifth or sixth all time among A&M receivers, A&M freshman receivers in yards. And he picked up where he left off. Um, very impressive, very impressive. Gonna be your deep threat, gonna be your guy down the field who makes a lot of plays. Great route runner. Um, I really feel like he has a chance to be one of the best receivers to ever play at AM. Um, that's not a hot take. Um, what I should say, I think he has a chance to be a top two receiver who's ever played at AM. I think it's Mike Evans. At number one, no one's even close. Then you got guys like Jeff Fuller, Christian Kirk, Josh Reynolds, who are pretty high up there. I think you can pass those guys. And I think you can do it for the next year or two. Okay, so I've, I've kind of given you all of the good stuff when it comes to A&M. There's other stuff too. I mean, I thought Josh DeBerry, he had one heck of a game. I'll get to that a little bit later. But what I didn't like, so, going into the game, I kind of wondered, we've been talking about the offense all offseason. Is Petrino going to work? Is Jimbo going to work? What can we expect from the offense? Blah, blah, blah. To me, I felt like the defense was an even bigger question. You knew on offense with the talent that they had, and, and not just that, but I felt like, 
the LSU game and the Ole Miss game last year kind of gave us an answer that, hey, Connor Wigman's a pretty dang good quarterback and, and they have something in this guy. But defensively, there were some questions, right? This pass rush was pretty bad last year. This run defense was pretty bad last year. The one good thing was the secondary and you lose your best two guys in that secondary, Antonio Johnson and, uh, and Jalen Jones. I was worried about corner a little bit. I was still worried that they didn't quite have that ace pass rusher that they needed. We talk about talent. They've got talent everywhere. You walk into practice and you look at this defensive line, you say, yeah, probably five of them could play in the NFL tomorrow. It's not true. It's just, it, that's how they look like as, as far as, uh, as eye test goes. Um, I didn't see enough to feel super confident in the group today. Um, now, New Mexico, they had a very interesting approach today. They, they basically wanted to have a bunch of quick passes. Um, they kind of took what the defense gave them. I, I think A&M played a little soft coverage uh, in the first half. And so it enabled them to just kind of get the ball in their hands quick and not really have a fear of a pass rush coming toward them. Um, and then, you know, they didn't run for many yards. I mean, it can't really be understated that A&M gave up less than 100 yards. I don't think they did that in one game last year. But at the same time, you, you kind of wanted their to be this dominance. Um, I think they had two sacks on the day. One came from Josh DeBerry on a blitz. The other came from uh, from Shamar Turner. But who are the defensive ends who are gonna get you the sacks this year? I, I just, I, I don't have the answer to that question. We saw Fadil Diggs flash in a couple games last year, but the fact that he led this group in sacks and he only had three, that was really troubling to me. I think this this team has a ton of great defensive linemen, but not when it comes to getting sacks. And you just didn't see that sort of pressure um, and that sort of dominance, right? They, they had the 27 yard run. There was a couple slips uh, against the run, um, but they weren't pitching a tent in the backfield like you kind of want to see this defensive line do. I thought Josh DeBerry, let's just let's just circle back on him for a second. I thought he was fantastic. Um, if you remember at the very beginning of preseason camp, I, I kind of put it out there. I was like, I would not be surprised if this Boston College transfer is the starter at cornerback with uh, next to Tyreek Chappelle. And at the time it was kind of a hot take because the, the thought was well it's Tony Grimes right the, the North Carolina transfer four star high four star recruit played 30 games at North Carolina was a decent player but I kind of put it out there I, I think it's the bear that's going to win this job well now you know why it was right I mean DeBerry was always a solid player you knew that you were going to get a solid player in them but the assumption and who was the starter all spring was Tony Grimes. Well, Josh DeBerry came in, and I think he even exceeded my expectations. He led the entire team with 10 tackles. He had a sack. He had one and a half TFLs. He had a pass breakup, and he had his interception. Um, I felt like I just saw his name pop up throughout the entire night. And the thing that I love about DeBerry that I don't think people talk about enough is he is a prolific tackler. This is a guy who, there was a reason why he played nickel at a second team all ACC level at Boston College. And it was because he was such a great tackle and a, t a tackler. And the one problem, the one thing we couldn't quite gauge was We've seen how high of a level he played at, at nickel at Boston College. We saw how high of a level he played in the ACC, but how could he play in the SEC and how could he play at outside cornerback? Well, I think, you know, we're, we still got more to learn. 
I don't know if he's ever gonna have a game quite like the one that he had tonight, but it was a great first impression, right? You talk the first game, okay, right? It's, you can't take too much from New Mexico. You take a bunch of first impressions, but I think there was a lot of growth uh, from this team that they, they showed compared to last season. Um, you know, I thought the, uh, going back to the offense real quick, the, the offensive line, Actually, well, I'll point out two freshmen that, that started tonight. Chase Pisanis, Torian York. Uh, Torian York started at middle linebacker. Only made two tackles. Probably made a couple mistakes here and there, but to start at middle linebacker, your first game, and to not make many mistakes, you know, it's not like you, you saw him and you're just like, oh my gosh, here's another whiff tackle. Here's another mistake. Um, we didn't really see that as much. I'm about to get run over by a car. Um, Chase Pisanis, I'd say the same. I thought the offensive line was solid. Um, Wigman, I felt, had a lot of time for the most part. Um, but there was a few plays he threw off his back foot. There was a few plays he had to scramble. I thought really the biggest concern with the O-line and really the offense in general was the running the football. Um, you know, I like these running backs. I, I think you're going to see a lot from them this season. It's going to be that committee of Amari Daniels, Le'Veon Moss, and Reuben Owens. But you didn't see just a ton of flash of greatness, and it was, I think, because they didn't have a ton of holes tonight when it came to, to the ground game. Uh, anyways, I am at my car now. Let me let me just kind of wrap up a couple thoughts. Um, Aiden plays Miami next week. You can't quite throw what happened today completely out of the window. Um, there were some things that encouraged you. This offense, I mean, just the growth that they made since last season, you see it, right? More explosive. These guys who were young last season, these guys that were hurt last season, they're back. This is a relatively, relatively pretty healthy team. I think the only guy who didn't play today was Donovan Green, who, who tore his ACL. Um, but overall, I felt like they made a lot of steps. I felt like you have to be encouraged. Connor Wigman, I think he's that dude for you. I think this is a guy who, by the end of the season, we're gonna be talking about as one of the better quarterbacks in the SEC. Um, I still think 2024 is the year for this team. I predicted A&M would win uh, nine games this season, go nine and three, have a chance to get to 10 wins. And uh, I still feel pretty good about that. I felt like, I think I predicted 51-6 today for A&M. And 52-10, uh, I think that's a uh, pretty good prediction. So anyways, again, thanks for uh, hanging with me today. This is a, a first time for me. This is my first season back covering A&M so it was uh, fun to to be back at Kyle Field um we'll see how you guys like this it, it may be something that hey Carter just stick to the field and do your stand up on the field talk about the game there it was way too dizzy to see you moving around and trying to uh, evade traffic so anyways hope you guys liked it I'll be at Miami next week we'll have plenty of more coverage from you at gigum247.com and uh, thanks for uh, hanging with us.